And whenever you play around with the effect, you get this, this kind of delay on top. And then I routed it through the Zen delay to make it even crazier. Hello everyone, it's Monday, back in the studio. My recent releases, Save the Day and Watch Me Burn on Lost Frequencies label, are doing really fine and I'm working 24 7 non-stop, also today, the entire day, on follow-up songs that might might work on their label, maybe not, maybe release them somewhere else, maybe on my label, I don't know. But I would love to showcase to you another one that is getting closer and closer to being finished and some small, interesting, a little more advanced techniques for electronic dance music, especially like more like deep, progressive, melodic techno. So first up, let's, let's look at the project. And not too many tracks, and right now it's just like intro, break, drop. That's, that's all I need for a song. Everything else is then just basically a copy of it. If I have these three sections working, I'm usually fine making the rest of it. The drop, although let's let's start with the intro, like some little unique thing that I love to do. There are, there are a couple of things going on. First of all, like a little gap. Uh, right here we have the kick low pass. Um, I introduced like a kick right before it, so it's like an off beat right before it starts again. And this is like a small little sound that helps to introduce the bass actually. You do that a lot in music. And this entire gap just to separate it. And the gap is then filled with the delay of the arpeggiators. One of them is uh, Diva. Quite a lot of delay, quite a lot of reverb, a lot of sample delay to make it wide. It's more background sound in this kind of song. And then since it sounded too, like, too artificial in a way, too perfect, I recorded right here the Jupiter. And it's kind of quirky, automated while recording, I think just the, the cutoff and the Royce. It's like, it's not perfect and that makes it like move a lot. So the entire track is like drifting, shifting and sounds less boring. Very important for electronic music because like Musically, it's not that exciting and there's usually not a whole lot happening. It's not like pop music where every section of the song is different and you have a voice that sings and lyrics and everything. You have to do like these small things to, to keep it kind of cool but still do something. For the sounds, the first ARP with Diva just has like an EQ, low cut, then LFO tool to make it pump a little, not entirely, because we want the attack, sample delay to make it wide, and then a reverb and an H delay. All of it automated. The Jupiter. Basically same thing, but there is also a bit crusher on top. It's just like a hint in there. I um, first tried out distortion, but since the analog thing already distorts on itself, it was like too much and it sounded, it sounded bad. So just a lot of sparkle with uh, the bit crushing. Just a hint in there helps to give it more bite, more attack and cut through the mix. The next section is all about introducing that bass line. Automate it a little, just to cut off, open it up, make it bright, less bright, especially in the little breaks right here. Uh, it's the Spectrosonic Trillion bass line and a little bit of channel EQ, actually like cutting away the very low frequencies. It's not really needed, the kick is playing right there at 40 hertz, and I cue away some of the low mids, mids, 
Um, it was just clashing too much with everything else going on in the song. Then Decapitate Her for the crunch, OGT for the making it sounding modern kind of thing. Uh, helped a lot actually, just 32%, not too much, just a little. And LFO tool for the side chaining on the bass quite heavily. Just a hi-hat introduced in there. And then the next section, I'm still not sure about. I don't, like, I, I want this to build up just a little, and it does, and then just drop to nothing. Um, but yeah, hear for yourself. It's kind of, I think it's kind of cool. I, I need to try, like this is the stuff you need to try in a club with an audience. If the club is packed, the part like this where it's just like random delay synthy sounds, like just overlapping, clashing, and then silence in between again, can be really epic. But I don't, like the length, judging the length is really hard without a crowd. I think maybe this part, the first one, is maybe already too long. It really, really depends. I need to, I just need to DJ again. COVID just really sucks. Uh, once I'm back on stage, I can test this. And then if you play it in a club just once, just looking at the faces of the people and seeing their reaction, you'll know if it's too long, too crazy, too short, if it needs to build up faster, slower, drop harder, or drop less. You can figure that out really easy. But just here in the studio, me sitting here, it's not the same thing. But yeah, then the bass gets introduced again uh, later on. It's all building up even more. just the arps back, the kick back, some, some hi-hats, um, some claps, and then um, like a noisy rhythm kind of sound to give it some speed. Uh, it still needs some mixing, that drop's still a little muddy, and I'm not sure about the man, like there, there's still some things where I'm not sure about, but it's, it's heading into the right direction. Yep, just back again to like being deep and not a whole lot in there. The The main sound is uh, actually a layered sound. It's this one right here. Covering like the very high frequencies and there is a ton of automation uh, on a dub delay. Just to be able to fill out the gaps. And then the second synth is a layer, and that is actually the, the OB6 right there. Let's see if it still plays, because I actually already recorded it. And whenever you play around with the fact, you get this, this kind of delay on top. And then I routed it through the Zen delay to make it even crazier. Um, so this is the first recording. And then the next one. This rising effect comes from here. And then before the drop, just all down again to zero to make it hit hard. And that is, I think, pretty much it. It's a very simple song. Down here, some effects, some white noise, some crash reverse, some hats reversed, just to fill out some of the, the gaps in there. 
and give it again something that moves over time. And it's really in its in its core just a simple instrumental kind of song, deep, melancholic, melodic, progressive kind of house music. And vocals probably on this one not. I think vocals would destroy this kind of vibe. It needs to be simple just for the club, basically a, cu a club tool. I just need to yeah tweak some things, make some things more normal again, some even weirder. And yeah, the length of all of the parts is really something I would love to test in a club. It's just it's just that important. Anyways, I hope this insight helped you a little to maybe try something out yourself, to maybe copy some techniques and just be inspired to make some music today. So enjoy that time in front of your machine making some epic tunes. And tomorrow back here in the studio for another episode.